Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about things you should not be accepting from your client or from a prospective client or for whoever wants to hire you to do business with you. And these are some things that I've come across that I've seen myself and that really kind of annoy me in the way people think they can treat translators or freelancers in general. Along those lines, I sort of divided it. First, I'm going to have the stuff that you should not be accepting from them. And next, I'm going to have the stuff that just get on my nerves, but it might just be me kind of being nitpicky about it. But let's start with the stuff that I think you shouldn't accept uh, from clients at this point or at any point in the future. Number one, the first thing you shouldn't accept from clients is when they ask you, please do this job for cheap as more work will be coming in the future. Or there is a possibility for more work in the future. There's a possibility to have a long-term relationship, however they word it, something like that. Basically what they're asking for you is you have an array of X they want you to offer them X minus something because they're, they're saying there's going to be a lot more work where that came from in some hypothetical future at some point, maybe, you know, as long as we're happy with whatever, whatever. That's, it's, yeah, it's complete crap. If, look, if they're happy with you and you're happy with them, then absolutely you can negotiate a future job or whatever and you can see that ahead of time. But in the meantime, you pay my rate, I do a good job for you and then we're happy and that's how business works, okay? You don't convince me to do a lower rate because of the possibility. No, in fact, if you reserve me now for jobs in the future, then we can negotiate a rate for all the stuff in the future. But you're not guaranteeing anything. You're just saying there's a possibility of something in the future, which doesn't mean anything. Ooh, see, see, this is how annoyed I get. Which doesn't mean anything, so, you know, skip it. If any prospective client tells you, give me a lower rate because there's a possibility of something in the future, ignore that. Give them your standard rate because that is your rate. And you know there is no lower rate because there's more stuff in the future. And I'll, I'll get into this a bit more. In fact, here, let me get into it now where people say, uh, oh and yeah, the other argument that they give you is that, sorry, I have to check my notes because I, I get mad at it so I had to yeah keep track of all of them otherwise I start rambling a bit too much. The other thing they say is uh, we have a huge volume of work so lower your rate. Again, your rate is X, they want X minus something because they give you a large volume of work. Their thinking behind this is that, oh, you know, the more work there is, the easier because you're probably using some cat tool. In fact, many times they'll do, and I've mentioned this before, they do this whole study of fuzzy matches, perfect matches, and they pay you less for all of that. Anyway, these are kind of two different sides of the same coin. First of all, if you don't use a cat tool, then there is no advantage. You know, it's not like it's, you ha it's easier if you have a longer job than a shorter job. What is true is that you're at least guaranteed a job, you know, for longer than, than just a short job. You know, if you have a job of like to translate 20 words and, uh, and then you have to search for your next client and your next client. Yeah, it's true. If they give you something long, at least you're guaranteed a client for the next, you know, few days or however long the job takes. And so that's true. On the other hand, it's still a lot of work and you should get paid for the amount of work you do. So you shouldn't be lowering your rate just because volume means lower rate. You know, you can do, you can make a judgment call saying, well, otherwise I'm not sure if I can get another job. So yeah, I'll accept a bit lower because at least I'm guaranteed a job. That's up to you. But also remember this could affect you in the future because that means from that, that point on, they're only going to hire you at that rate. But, um, the fact, the mere fact that there's volume and that they think that means you should have a lower rate doesn't make sense and you shouldn't accept it uh, just on itself. So, and that, that ties into the other thing where they, you know, because uh, the first point I mentioned where they say, oh, we're giving you this small job now, but there'll be a whole lot more in the future, so give us a good rate. Ugh, that annoys me. Anyway, on to the next one. Uh, let's see, I already did cheap work now, more possible in the future. Um, oh, another one that's, maybe I should have, no, I, I'll include this here and stuff you shouldn't accept. At least I don't accept it. I know I did before, but, and the issue is with urgent jobs. Now this is especially clients you have not worked with before. If you know them already and you feel comfortable with them, fine, you make your own judgment call. But if they're clients you have not worked with before and they have an urgent job that really needs to be done right away, I would avoid those, quite frankly, because... Every time that I've had them, there's been some problem with them. If it's a problem, if you know, either it's a problem with the files they send me and uh, and they have to keep resending me, or I send back the translation and it's done well, but then they have issues because uh, you know they mess. 
Anytime there's something urgent, it means they have some issue along that supply chain, either the person you're dealing with or their client or their boss or something like that, and which is making everything urgent. You know, that presentation that needs to be translated, you know, it wasn't just thought up yesterday. The meeting or the, you know, the, whatever it is that you're translating for the big, for the big, uh, uh, get together or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're translating for the annual report. Like it's not something that was just dreamed up yesterday. People have been preparing this forever, but because something along the supply chain, you know, someone didn't do their job right, or, you know, has no idea what they're doing anyway, because of some mess up there, suddenly everything got urgent and it's going to come back to bite you, whether it be that they sent you the wrong file or they sent you the correct file, but they wanted different stuff done or with a payment. And uh, in fact, I'm having an issue now with a payment because of anyway, something correlated with that. It's been going on for a while. But anyway, it and um, or something along the lines will get messed up. If it's an urgent job, that should be a big bid red flag. And so just remember that urgent is not a good sign. You know, it's a judgment call as with anything at the end of the day, but I would kind of stay away from those from the urgent jobs. Um, Oh, this is a great one that I like. When it's time to get paid, and you, you probably get this with the urgent jobs as well. Uh, that's what happened to me. Uh, they'll say, oh, we can't pay you now because our client hasn't paid us yet. You should never have to accept this, ever, okay? You, your contract is with whoever hired you, and that's it. You did the job for the person who hired you. You expect to get paid. The fact is, if they have another end client, if you're working for a translation agency or whoever it is, and they have an end client, they're getting paid more per word than you are, right? But that's because they assume the risk. Anytime I hire an, a translator for my agency, I pay them after their job, no matter if my client has paid me or not. That has nothing to do with me paying the translator for their job, okay? That, that's not on them. I'm the one who decided to work with the end client who isn't paying me, and so I have to deal with that. That has nothing to do with them. You cannot accept that from any of your clients. You cannot accept the fact that they say, oh, I haven't gotten paid yet, so please wait and please be patient because as soon as we get paid, we'll pay you. No, 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 no. They pay you because they owe you and that's it. Their payment with someone else is too bad, but that's it. And so what I've had is I've had someone keep insisting that this is the case. I said, my contract is with you. It has nothing to do with them. So I need to get paid from you. They're like, oh, no, it has everything to do with them because I'm like, okay, if my contract has something to do with them, I'm contacting them directly. I'm letting them know that I made the translation, not you, because I've come to find out the person who had hired me, she and I've talked about this a couple of years ago in a, in, a, in, in a video, but she had, you know, told the client that she was translating it, but in, instead she hired it out to me and to another person, which was a complete mess. Anyway, you know, I was like, I'm going to contact them directly. She's like, no, that goes against every code. You can't do that. I'm like, you're going against every code here, okay? Anyway, they need to pay you for your job. If you've done your job, you get paid. That's it. Nothing to do with the end client or whoever else it might be. That's it. Okay, I'll calm down. Let's see what else there is. Uh, in terms of the things you shouldn't accept for your client, I have one more. It's uh, the ambiguous projects. These are um, the problem with ambiguous projects is they'll they might give you something that needs to be translated, but they haven't sent you the final document. They haven't finalize the timeline yet or they haven't done something you don't want surprises once you accept the job that's the main thing do not accept the job until you've seen the thing to be translated and you have it in writing what the precise uh deadline is and um and what you're getting paid for it you know because the problem with this is if you do not want to have to accept a job and then later not be able to do it because no matter how much it's that client's fault for not telling you ahead of time they're going to blame you you know, there's, there's no, you know, because suddenly they got screwed. They suddenly thought they had hired a translator out and suddenly they don't, they haven't. They, you know, they, suddenly they're, they're without a translation or they have to go find another translator and they have to do the work again from scratch. Um, and of course they're going to blame you. Even if it's completely their job, they're going to blame you. So, and the way to avoid this is to make sure that you know the job 100% before you say yes. So don't accept a job on spec. You know, make sure you've seen the file, the exact file to be translated. You have it right there. Um, you know, don't don't say, you know, don't let them tell you, oh, we'll send you a page and tell us if that's okay. Then it'll be like, you know, 500 more pages like that one. No, you don't know that. And so you need to see all the 500 pages. You need to know the exact deadline and you need to know what you're getting paid. 
okay? Because then later, uh, you know, at least everything's there and it's in black and white because you have it in writing. You need it in writing. It, it, even just an email or something is fine. Preferably you can get either a payment order, but I don't, I don't care too much about payment orders. What I do care is that it's somewhere there in writing. As long as it's on an email, then I know I can go back and, you know, show that, that it has been done. Um, so yeah, make sure there's no ambiguity and that you know exactly what you're doing. So once you accept a job, you don't have to change later because you, you never want to do that. You never want to accept a job and then come back later and say you can't do it or something along those lines. So those are the things you should not accept from clients. Now I'm going to get briefly, because I'm, it's already 10 minutes of video here, uh, into stuff that annoys me about you know, when clients contact you. First of all is when they contact you with an email that says, Dear Linguist. Okay, because every time, especially someone I've been doing business with before, I'm like, you know, I know you're farming this out to many different people or something, but especially if we've done business before, I mean, you know, I don't know, you know, have the decency to just send me an email, you know, you can copy and paste it to people, but every time I need an email, you I'm using anyway, it. That annoys anyway, that annoys me. me. And uh, uh, again, uh, again, you know, if I already have a relationship with uh, this client, uh, then and they, they're sending me a dear linguist that they've also obviously CC'd a bunch of people, then obviously, you know, they have a bunch of translators that it's all the same to them who they hire. And it's not like they value the fact that I'm trying to do good work for them. It just is a pet peeve of mine. That's why I didn't say it in a thing you should totally avoid, but it's a thing that annoys me. So that's why I'm leaving it there. Um, another thing that really annoys me is when they ask for a best rate. And maybe I should have included this and in stuff you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't ever accept. I didn't because a lot of people just write nowadays, just write, we need your best rate and they don't even think about it. They just write it and put it in. What annoys me is that it implies that you have a standard rate, once again, X, and they want your X minus something because your standard rate is padded up. It, you know, they, they assume that you artificially raise your standard rate and they're like, no, no, we want your real rate, your best rate. No, and you know, that's, not, that's not how I work. I, uh, I, you know, I have a rate and that's it. You know, I, know, I don't have a best rate for people who are in the know. And uh, so I know a lot of people, they don't put that much thought into it when they write best rate, but it still annoys me. So yeah, that just annoys me when they write best rate. And the last one that kind of annoys me is when they write something like, we're offering you a job. Uh, again, this might just be me. It just sounds patronizing to me when they say, uh, well, you're sitting there and you're unemployed and you don't have anything to do. So we're offering you this job because uh, now you can suddenly start making some money, you poor unemployed slob. <sighs> again, this really just comes across it's conveyed in the email in the in the way they email you and but I've had enough of them that kind of give me that sense that it just annoys me again this might just be me um, and it, again it also might just be because I do have regular clients so I'm not in that situation maybe if I were more in that situation then I I relate a bit more but I don't so it just annoys me so there you go I uh, by the way even if you're in this situation um, you are a freelance translation professional and you need to see yourself as such. Don't see yourself as some person sitting there waiting to get money, scrounging around unemployed in front of their computer, uh, wasting time or something. No, no, you're a professional and you should be treated as a professional. And as once you make the commitment to be a freelance translator, that's the case and that's it. And, and I try to emphasize this also in my course and stuff like that, where, you know, I say treat it like a real job and make it very professional because you are, it's only going to be as professional as you treat it. This, you know, people are only going to take your job as seriously as you take it. So take it seriously. And I think that's what annoys me about those patronizing type emails. Um, anyway, hopefully, hopefully you don't come across uh, stuff like this too often, but hopefully when you do come across it, you can sort of see the red flags and hopefully avoid some you know, really bad headaches down the line uh, by avoiding some of this stuff, you know, where they ask you for, yeah, the cheap work now and the, the, the ambiguous stuff or the urgent stuff that then just starts going to hell in a handbasket and all that stuff. Anyway, hopefully you can find this video useful in your future endeavors. And uh, don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this in the future. And that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.